So in 2018, China issued a nine month moratorium on licensing new games and cracked down on portrayals of violence in games. And then in 2019, China introduced rules restricting citizens under the age of 18 to playing games for 1.5 two hours per day on weekdays, three hours during the weekend and holidays and only during the daytime. Now, uh, this happened, like I said, in 2018, 2019. Not that many people over here knew about it, but in the gaming landscape, it's been crazy. China has always had these crazy, just controlling laws, not over just only their games, but also in their media and how they're portrayed in the media. Uh, if you didn't know, you're going to learn today, kind of. So what we're saying is that they control their mobile gaming, even though mobile gaming is one of the highest, if not the highest grossing Thing that comes to mind when it comes to gaming uh, especially over there that the mobile landscape is diverse and it's uh, the major thing that's going on over there so once you start thinking about this it's kind of hard to believe that they would restrict them to that being only that much you know only that much of playing time and this was this happened a few years ago and uh, with things like PUBG, they changed the game to, I think, uh, uh, something of peace. Uh, they changed where if you get killed, you turn into, like, only green smoke comes out. And you just turn into a box. You don't, like, lump over and die. They changed so much in these different mobile games to where it's not as, uh, as they per se, violent. Uh, but they changed these games even with other games. Like, uh, it's hard for things like Mobile Legends to get out there. And other MOBAs and things like that, they either have to change them or they have to change how they portrayed or something very major. Also, within the mobile gaming landscape, there's tons of things of trying to get into the localization pool, which meaning like if you want to play any of their games that's region locked, you have to go through hoops and daggers just to try to do this because they either have extensive, you have to have a mobile phone number through them. You have to have, you have to show your passport. You have to show all these different things, your IDs and stuff, just to be able to play these games. And the reason that has been locked down and that has been these past few years, if you haven't noticed with a lot of people that try to use TapTap or try to uh, change their VPN just to download a game and be able to play it, you can't do that as easily no more because of these laws. So you have to have your ID to be able to even play this game because they want to know if you're 18 or older. Uh, but because of this, a lot has happened and some have thought if this is going to change or hurt the mobile gaming landscape over there. Well, with that being said, just a few days ago, guys, they just introduced a new bill, a whole new bill uh, that's coming up. There's a few articles I will have that I'm reading that I will have down where you can go look at them yourself. But. On Monday, China issued a sweeping regulations giving children under the age of 18 a three-hour window to play video games per week. Three, hour, three hours per week. Now, China's youth will be allowed to play games only between 8 p.m. and 9 p.m. on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays and public holidays. So if, it, if it's a public holiday and say it lands on a Tuesday, they will be able to play the game throughout the week on eight through nine, but they still only get three hours. That to me is astronomically insane uh, because I know people who are 16, 17, 15, who not only play these games, but are good at these games that, uh, that has access to bank accounts and things like that, who buy skins, who do those different things or who allow their parents who allow them to be able to pay for skins, stuff like that, that to play these games, to enjoy these games to their fullest. And they're just not allowed to now because of these crucial, heartbreaking laws. Now, if we can get into the meat of it. There's a couple more things, but something that this article states, the gaming addiction has affected studies and normal life, and many parents have become miserable. The National Press and Republican uh, Administration said in a statement earlier this month, a newspaper affiliated with China's state-run Newswire blasted gaming companies for targeting young people at one point describing online gaming as a spiritual opium uh, now as a mobile gamer myself i can see how they can see that it can be a gambling type of thing with the gotcha mechanics because we all know the gotcha mechanics in mobile gaming is outlandish i understand these people need 
to make money for not only holding up servers, but to pay the workers, to pay the voice actors, to pay the designers, to pay everyone, and to be able to run these games for free because most mobile games are free to play. And I understand that, but these practices are egregious. Uh, between, I would rather them saying, hey, you can buy, buy this skin at a certain price, not, hey, you will have a chance to buy the skin, but after 10 or 20 pools, you can get the skin for free. You're going to get the skin after 20 pools, but, you know, you have to do 10, you know, after 10, 20 pools, that's like $20 a pop to do these different pools, and it, it can get crazy but it feels so good when you get it, that feeling that you get. And they don't want to cause that addicting feeling to younger, young kids like 10, 11, 12. So I can understand that. But to regulate 16, 17, 18, 15, and just people from gaming to three to three hours, that is that is monumentally, uh, that is insane. Uh, something else that they state, the Chinese... China has uh, over 720 million gamers and roughly 110 million of them are under the age of 18, says Daniel Ahmed, uh, a gaming analyst. He's very good. I follow him on Twitter if you haven't. He, he's really good. But it is likely a substantial portion of gamers given the proliferation of stories in Chinese media. Chinese state media reports that 13.2% of China's minors play games for over two hours a day on weekdays amounting to tens of millions of children. A recent survey of 4,000 video gamers over the age of 18 in eight countries showed that Chinese gamers play more games or hours games per week than any other country. Chinese gamers played an average of 12.4 hours per week, exceeding the U.S. average of 7.7 .7 per week and the uh, global average of 8.5 per week, according to Cloud Services Limelight. Now, there are so many several different reasons that this can be skewed, but those numbers don't lie, and it is pretty crazy. But I don't think that they should lock it down to this extent. Another thing is another reason, quote-unquote, what these guys are wanting to do. This They say, during this time when you can't play games, students can read more, exercise more, and get close to nature. Play less games this winter vacation, and you will be the best at the start of the next school year. Now, this is all coming because they announced a lunar, a lunar New Year holiday, 2020. There's this whole new Lunar New Year thing. And now, being that I'm over here in America, I'm not too sure how it works out or anything like that. But this is from an article, and this is what it states. Tencent Holding is the owner of the largest gaming company in terms of revenue, and they also own the largest social media platform in China. The company, which has been dominating the video game industry, Play has, uh, for quite some time now, had drawn up a calendar according to which young video gamers are only allowed to play one hour each day starting from January the 17th to February the 15th. These 14 days include the weekends and the Lunar New Year holiday for 2022, according to the latest regulation by the Chinese government, which is trying to prevent youngsters from addicting games. So this is a new law thing that just passed that are restricting them even more. Uh, from 15 from 14 days you can only play so much and that is is crazy it's crazy that they are breaking down it to this level and I know they have the laws are different but uh it's it's unbelievable what they're doing and now a lot of the uh, Tencent and them a lot of the companies are kind of worried what this may do to their stocks and to the gaming revenue but uh, like I said, it will be interesting to see how the gamers will react to the government crackdown. Some pewters fear that it can, it can lead to a slowing down of the game industry's growth in the country. As a matter of fact, in 2021, the industry earned the smallest revenue in the last three years. And that's because, like I said before, they started enacting these rules in 2018. And then in 2019, they made them tougher. So in 2020. In 2021, they got stricter and stricter, and now 2022, we can see that they're still constricting on it. So I wonder what's going to happen next. Like I said, uh, Tencent is one of the largest, if not the largest, in mobile gaming news and uh, mobile gaming games and things of that nature, and what will come of it. And I want to know, what do the community think about this? What do uh, young gamers and uh, uh, older gamers like myself uh, think about this. I honestly don't think it should be this far. It should go to this level to where you have to check IDs. You have to input all these things just to be able to play. And then at that, you have to be able to only play for a certain amount of time, for a certain amount of hours. I think that is insane. Uh, 
that they got all this stuff from this facial tracking to playing your games to uploading your IDs. And I know it's run differently, but from over here in America, I think that just is just not right. But what do you guys think? Please let me know down below your thoughts on how these mobile gaming hours and mobile gaming is being regulated in China. And hopefully I can do more of these news stories, get more in depth with them and just seeing how gaming, mobile gaming is taking over and how it is affecting people all over the world. Uh, if you want to want me to cover something from your country, be you from the Philippines or from Malaysia, anything like that, I'm trying to co uh, cover and gather these different news stories from all over, not just here in America, but we will be going over some other stories as well. But thank you guys for watching and remember to always, always stay frisky and that I love you. They act like you fuck with them They don't know I be gunning Pow pow, got them running I feel like they just racing Over to come over to party with me Shots on shots, baby